I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves, on behalf of others, those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the heavenly throne of grace. Praying together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, desires not the death of sinners, but that they may turn from their wickedness and live. He has empowered and commanded his ministers to pronounce to his people, be impenitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. For this reason, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that our present deeds may please him, and the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your grace. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Together we say, O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. For from him comes my salvation. He truly is my strength and my salvation. He is my defense, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail a man to crush him, all of you together, as if you were a tottering wall or a broken fence? Their plan is only to bring down the one whom God has exalted. Their delight is in lies. Nevertheless, for God alone my soul in silence waits, for my hope is in Him. He truly is my strength and my salvation. He is my defense, so that I shall not fall. 
And God is my help and my glory. He is the rock of my might, and in him is my trust. Put your trust in him always, you peoples. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our hope. As for the children of men, they are but a breath. The children of men are deceitful. Upon the scales they are altogether lighter than a breath. Oh, trust not in oppression. Put not vain hopes in robbery. If riches increase, set your heart upon them. One thing has God spoken, indeed two things, if I heard him say, that power belongs to our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. The first lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life, that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, it is a great privilege and joy always to be invited to open the Word of God. But today, at the beginning of this March for Life Day and this March for Life service, for me as a Canadian, to to be invited to address this service is a particular delight and honor. believe that the March for Life is a powerful witness to the heart of God as revealed in the scriptures, as I hope we'll be seeing in a few moments. 
I believe it helps us to give testimony to the fact that God loves life. And he's made life available to all in Jesus. And in Jesus alone, there is life. And amazingly, for those who run by faith and repentance to this Jesus and find in him life, to their amazement and joy, all all the blessings in the heavenly places are ours in Christ Jesus, Paul says in Ephesians 1. They also find, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, that they're propelled into a life of ministry whereby they are ambassadors for God and agents for life. That's what we're looking at. We have two passages that we're looking at, which I suggest to you are bookends of life in the scriptures. Deuteronomy 30 and John 10. Deuteronomy 30 is the end of what was a very lengthy sermon that Moses had given. This was the conclusion of his life, almost literally, probably days from when he would uh, make his uh, way up the mountain, and that would be the last that they would see him. But he's now addressing a new generation He's doing so as a first-hand witness to the purposes of God and the hand of God at work. He reminds them as a good lawyer systematically going through step by step all that God has done, reminding them particularly about 38 years ago when in fact they were basically at this place. And rather than trusting that God was faithful and deciding to walk within with him into what he wanted to give them, they fell back. And so God made an oath which was no one of that generation would live to go into the promised land. And all save Caleb and Joshua, not even Moses got to go in, were now being poised with Moses giving them a kind of pep talk a kind of walk through, and now in Deuteronomy 30, he's at the closing argument, the point of it all. He's stacked the decks clearly in terms of making it clear that if you walk with God, if you make God your God, then there's blessings and life for you. But if you choose to say no to God, there is certainly curse, and death. He said, For this commandment I commanded you today, it's not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It's not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? He said in verse 15, See, I've set before you today a good uh, life and good, death and evil. And then he says in verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, here it is, with lump in his throat, crying out, begging what would be so obvious, he says, therefore, please, that's my word, please, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Loving the Lord your God and obeying his voice. Holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days. That you may dwell in the land and that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Moses had more than a lingering fear that although this was so obvious, what fool would choose curse and death over blessing and life? And yet he knew all too well, that many and whole generations, just as Joshua knew when he had a similar talk, Joshua 22 to 24. And so it is that as we leaf our way through the Old Testament passages, we discover that though there are a faithful remnant throughout, there are Simeon-like people who are waiting for the consolation of Israel, but there is that throng of those who say no to God 
and therefore choose death and curse. So it is, thinking of the bookend, that the appeal of Moses necessarily had to look back to a part that he'd already said in his lengthy sermon. In Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, he said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, this is Moses speaking, from among you and your brothers, it is to him you shall listen. And so to the delight of all who look to God, in the fullness of time, The very Son of God was born of a virgin, laid in a manger, raised with the name Jesus because that was the nature of his ministry. And so he became the light of the world, light to the nations, bread of heaven. And in the passage which we've had read, thinking of this bookend of life, we find that Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd and he makes an interesting statement. He says this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I've came that they might have life and have it abundantly. He goes on to say, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Later he says, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life. And so Jesus, thinking of Ezekiel 34, in which God fired the leaders of Israel because they were unfaithful and thought this was all about them. He said, I myself, let me just read a few verses of it. Uh, He said this, thus says the Lord God, behold, I'm against the shepherds and I will require my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths that they may not be food for them. For thus says the Lord God, behold, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. And so it is that Jesus says the thief not only runs, but the thief actually has a mandate and a purpose which is only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've made my choice. Choose life. He said, I've chosen life. Life in all its fullness. And we know what that means for him. That means life not just for him alone, but for the many who would run by faith to him. It's an acknowledgement of the fact that in fact death is a horrible enemy that Jesus himself must deal with. It's, 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 and he makes it clear that in fact it's his desire that none should perish, but that all should come to life in him. Jesus not only has made his choice for life, but he's also made provision for life, for all. Isaiah 53, that great passage, written hundreds of years before Jesus' earthly pilgrimage. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This Jesus has made provision for life for all. And so by verse 11, out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus chose life, he made provision for life, and there's life only in him. Let me just quote that famous voice of, voice, verse of scripture, John 14, 6, in which Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He chose life, 
He made provision for life, and he's the only way to life. So if you choose life, you must choose Jesus. But what is quite amazing to me, and I want to conclude, is that in 2 Corinthians 5, Paul makes it clear that when you run by faith to this Jesus, everything changes. Listen to this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. From certain death and curse to all the blessings in the heavenly places are yours. Now in Christ, all this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting friends to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, listen to this, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Extraordinary, incredible mercy and grace. The one who passionately loves life, the one who is the author of life, the one who doesn't want any to know death, the one who's made provision for life, the only way for life is one who takes the likes of you and me and makes us as ambassadors for him and for life. Dear friends, let us pray today that this march for life would be a powerful witness to God's heart for life, for the sanctity of life, to the world, to the nation. Let us pray that God's fear and horror of death would be understood. There's no friend in death. Let us pray that it would be clear that Jesus alone has made provision for life. And let's pray that an appeal would go out, even as the march goes on, to people and to the nations, saying, come to choose life, choose Jesus. And to those who know Christ, let us pray the appeal would go out, friend, be an agent for life because God loves life. I'm going to end. Would you stand with me as we end in the prayer? I'm going to use the, the collect for the second Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in reaffirming our faith as we recite together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to invite you to be seated as we uh, bid our fearless and faithful leader for life, Georgette, to come forth with our guest today who is going to give us 
a testimony about being silent no more. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, as you all know, part of what Anglicans for Life does is we are the co-sponsors, and I'm the co-founder of the Silent No More Awareness Campaign, in which women, men, grandparents, family members, talk about the impact abortion has had on their lives, especially the woman who has um, gone through the procedure. And at the end of that whole thing, there is nothing. There is just the emptiness and the loss and the sadness and the grief and the guilt. But there is hope for those of us who have bought the lie and believed that an abortion was going to fix us, heal us, um, make the problem go away. So Silent No More Awareness Campaign is about bringing these voices to light. And this afternoon at the Supreme Court, uh, there will be about 45 women and men and, and couples sharing their stories, 31 of them for the very first time. Um, and it's very powerful and, and you can view them uh, online and uh, uh, I guess it was about five or six years after we started the campaign back in 2002, a young woman contacted us and she had quite a story to tell. And we worked with her, we made sure she was healed, she knew she was forgiven, she had been renewed in Christ, as Bishop Masters talked about. And she was at a place in her life where she was ready to share her story. And Kelly is um, a dear friend. She has traveled with me to a couple of different places and um, we have been able to share her story. Um, a couple of years after she started sharing, it was in the midst of some of that partial birth abortion debate that she was even asked to go on uh, what was then the, um, what was his name? The O'Reilly Factor. Factor. And, and this young woman with great grace, and the knowledge that Jesus had forgiven her, stood up in front of the national television and spoke of what was a terrible choice, but how God had redeemed it. And I am so honored to invite Kelly now to share her story for you. And so you can um, help us be silent no more. Kelly? Thank you, Georgette. I, I want to thank you for inviting me today because being able to share our testimony as a woman who has made this choice is hugely freeing. Mm -hmm. And so I am going to try not to stray too much and keep it condensed. I know you're going to hear lots of speakers today. Um, but there are three things that I want to try and point out. So I'm going to highlight those as I tell my story. Um, <clears throat> at 14, I didn't really know what was happening to my body. So I went to my pediatrician and she told me that I was at least five months pregnant. And I wasn't really sure how that could be possible because it had only happened one time. I wasn't even sure what I had done was really sex, but I was here five months pregnant. And so the first thing I wanna highlight is, please know the resources to help somebody who is going through an unplanned pregnancy. My family and I did not know the resources available to us. And so I sought out um, advice from what I had seen in movies and, and what I had um, heard from my pastor. I went to my pastor and said, what does God say about all this? And she said, well, in this circumstance, because of your age, God will understand, it'll be fine. And I thought to myself, hey, you know, all these lawmakers say that this is okay. And you know, my church leader, who's a representative of God is saying that it's okay. So, you know, it must be the answer to our problem and it'll just make it go away and we can go on living life the way that it was. That wasn't the case. Um, it was 24 years ago, but I can remember every detail of the procedure as I stand before you today. So my second point is, if you're helping someone who is facing an unplanned pregnancy, please know about the procedures. Liveaction.org is a website that has videos that very clearly lay out each of the procedures. And it's awful to watch and hear, 
but it's what happens. And I think if women were to know the actual truth of what the abortion procedures were before making that decision, they wouldn't choose such a thing. Because for me, I remember vividly going through a five-day process where I went back and forth from a facility, an abortion facility to a hotel. The first three days were spent being slowly and painfully dilated. The fourth day, I lay on a table and my baby was frantically moving around trying to get my attention. The abortionist came in and inserted a needle and I never felt her move again. The next day, I had to be forced into labor, ultimately delivering a lifeless baby. And then I had to live with all of that. And all those things that my pastor and the lawmakers said was an answer and simple was not. I knew it was horrible, I knew it was wrong, and I hated myself because I had killed my child. <laughs> and so I lived in this darkness for a really long time and I made a lot of bad choices to try and numb that pain away. Um, and I went to a therapist who told me that she believed that all of those problems that I was experiencing were due to the abortion. And I was like, oh, that can't possibly be it. It was 10 years ago, I've just got something else. And so my third point is there is something called post-abortion syndrome. The psychological community might try and deny it, but it is real. I've experienced it because when she said that is what the problem was, I went to a Rachel's Vineyard retreat. And at that retreat, I was completely drenched in God's forgiveness and my life completely changed. All those bad decisions turned into turning around and following God and all of the joys and blessings that he's brought to my life. I met a godly man, we have three wonderful children, and it seems like we should just gallop off into the sunset and that's the happy ending. But I still am brought to my knees at times when I think about what I did to my first child. And that pain will never go away. Yes, it's covered by the grace of Christ, but it's still there. And so, her name is Corey, and for her spirit, that's why I'm silent no more. Thank you. Thank you. Would you please stand or kneel as we enter a time of prayer? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. I bid your prayers for the church and for the world that those who confess God's name may safeguard with faith and joy the dignity of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I bid your prayers for a greater reverence for the sanctity of all life, that we may further the work of God's kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I bid your prayers for all who are vulnerable, especially unborn children made in your divine image. Pray that they may be brought safely to birth and that they may be kept from the scourge of abortion. Lord, in your mercy, I bid your prayers for repentance, pardon, and healing for all parents of aborted children for all those who have aided in abortions, and for all those who have failed to help women in crisis pregnancies. Lord, in your mercy, 
I bid your prayers for all who care for expectant mothers, that their skills may be used for health and healing. Lord, in your mercy, I bid your prayers for a proper respect for all people with disabilities, that they may proclaim with fervor that they are a gift made in God's image. Lord, in your mercy, I bid your prayers for the sick, troubled, weak, and dying, that they may be granted the joy of salvation and the grace of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. I bid your prayers for our leaders, that they may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and maintain true religion. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our I bid your prayers for all who work to promote the cause of life, that not only laws, but also hearts and minds be changed to affirm the dignity of all people. Lord, in your mercy, I bid your prayers and thanksgiving for all who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, O God, who adorns creation with splendor and beauty and fashions human life in your image and likeness, awaken in every heart reverence for the work of your hands and renew among your people a readiness to nurture and sustain your precious gift of human life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Seated for just a moment. As we come to our offering, would ask Deacon Georgette to come up again and have a short sharing uh, before we have our offering. A few moments ago, when Bishop Masters was speaking and preaching, he, made a, he used a phrase that Christ laid down his life for us. And really that becomes such a model for us um, and what we are to do in thanksgiving back to him for what he has done in redeeming us. As we think about offertory um, and offerings, we often just think of it financially. But I believe that God loves when we offer ourselves back to him as well. And um, we have a living example of that today, and we've asked Lisa Bayer to come and share her story of how God has um, used her offering for his glory. Lisa? Thank you, Georgette, very much. Ultrasounds save lives not only as an early detector of disease, as we learned in school, but also saving the lives of the beating hearts in utero and the bodies and souls of the mothers who are carrying them. I have the privilege of watching firsthand the initial bonding of a mother with an unplanned pregnancy to the child she once thought about aborting. This happens as she's watching her 10-week fetus moving and dancing and the heart beating on the ultrasound monitor in front of her. Ultrasound is something I became interested in about halfway through my 35 year tenure with a wonderful dental practice. God laid upon my heart the desire to come alongside women uh, with an unplanned pregnancy. Pursuing that, I attended an informational meeting at one of our local crisis pregnancy centers. I love all things medical, so being part of the medical team is where I felt God wanted me to be. Except for one small problem. I did not have the credentials to join the team. You needed to be a registered nurse or a registered sonographer, and you can't just train on the job for OB scans. 
Fast forward a few years later, still having the desire uh, to learn ultrasound, I researched the local Diagnostic Medical Sonography Programs, or DMS as we call it. At the young age of 50, <laughs> I started taking the prerequisites. Two years later, I was accepted into the DMS program at NOVA, retired from my job, and started school full time. As my studies progressed, I sort of reevaluated my goals and decided that I didn't want to limit myself to just limited OB ultrasounds in a pregnancy resource center. I was working way too hard to do such easy work. My first job after graduating and passing my registry exam boards was with the maternal fetal medicine practice, where I was excited to use all my newfound skills. However, it became very clear very quickly that is not where God intended me to be, and I was miserable, so I quit. Feeling lost and searching for the next big job, I saw an advertisement for volunteer opportunities at CareNet Pregnancy Resource Center, and I decided to go ahead and attend the informational meeting. I thought, well, I can be volunteering while I'm waiting for what's next. They were so kind and so loving and so prayerful. With my new credential, I could now volunteer and be part of the medical team. But the Lord had better plans for me. CareNet PRC called me with a paid job opportunity. And what a blessing it has been. Performing limited ultra, OB ultrasound exams is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And CareNet PRC is exactly where God wants me. Saving lives, hearts, and souls with ultrasound. Our mission at CareNet Pregnancy Resource Center is that every woman and man struggling with an unplanned pregnancy will come through our doors and be transformed in Christ. Everything the Lord has called me to sacrifice for him and his ministry, he has repaid a hundredfold. As the Lord leads each of us, let's all keep giving for the sake of life. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. O Lord, may the offering of this day, may this offering before you this day glorify your name. May all that we do today glorify your name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing and please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty Father, you created us in your image and love us with a perfect love. Grant us grace and strength in all our words and deeds, both today and throughout the year, that we might manifest your love for the most vulnerable and fragile in our midst, and for all who do not know you. As we march for life, 
Be present with us, and work through us to extend your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for a minute. I want to say thank you for spending a day today uh, as we begin to uh, march in a few minutes, but, but coming out worshiping with us, but also uh, to bear witness uh, for life uh, to the nation and to the world. So thank you for giving of your time and your resources to be here. In listening to Bishop Charlie, I was, a couple of verses kind of came to me. Uh, in, in John chapter 1, we're told of Jesus that in him was life. And he was the light of the world. Then Jesus said of himself, he said, I am the bread of life that has come down from heaven. He said again, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so as we go forth bearing witness today, remember that we are bearing witness not only of his life, but the life that he has now imparted in us and through us. Um, We live in a unique time in history. God has placed us here to bear witness to him and for him and for his cause. And so as we go forth, I want to do just a very simple commissioning. I want to invite you to just hold your hands out like this in a receiving kind of mode. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would pour out a fresh anointing upon these, your people. As we go forth to bear witness to your truth and to your life, use us this day. May your radiance shine in us and through us. And Lord, may this small expression of walking down this street make a huge impact for the lives of so many yet unborn. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.